free beer. Every drop is brewed especially to suit the modern taste. Bavarians is for your man and you too. America's fastest growing beer. We like it. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, with a higher BAC than your ABV, Greg, Ali, Scott, and Dan. Or some mixture there of it. Welcome in, everybody. It's the Unfiltered Gentleman. Thanks for joining. Thanks for hanging out. Most importantly, thanks for drinking along. I am Greg. I am being joined by Scott. Mixing it right in. And Ali. Hi there. Hi. We should call you Parmesan Alley tonight. <laughs> sure, that'll work. Yes, exactly. Uh, thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Shout out to our top listening city of last week, and that was Moore Park, California. Whoa. Yeah, shout out to the locals over there in Moore Park. That's where Integrin is, so uh, maybe Integrin was hanging out with us. Uh, welcome into the show. We are the Unfiltered Gentlemen. We're a podcast centered around craft beer, the liquid, the lifestyle, and everything in between. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome, grab a beer, hang out with us. We also love some interaction, so hit us up on the grams, the unfiltered gentleman or Allie at Allie in Cali, or email us, the unfiltered gentleman at gmail.com. We love voicemails, 805 53 beer. How it is you want to get to us, get to us. And uh, if you're not new to the show, welcome back and start leaving us some voicemails. We got uh, got some, I don't know, surprises. We're going to mix things up a little bit today. We're going to do things in some different orders, see what everyone thinks. If you guys like it, let us know. If you guys hate it, let us know in a very gentle fashion. We yes. are very fragile. Yes. Our egos can't handle it. So, um, all right. That's us. That's uh, all the important stuff to get out at the top of the show. So without any further ado, let's start off with some hydration and find out what Allie's drinking over there. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend and I say I think I'll have myself a beer. What beer are you having yourself? All right. Well, so I chose this one today because, as you like to say, peek behind the curtain mm-hmm. as we record, it is Shred's birthday. Yes, it Shredded is. Shredded Brew on the Gram. So I thought that this beer would be great, even though the name is not completely accurate. I'm drinking Evil Twin, New York City. It was his birthday, and they didn't even care. <laughs> But what's the that's name not of the beer? true though, Shred. That- <laughs> oh, oh, that sucks. JK, Poor Shred. JK. <laughs> Happy birthday, Shred. Hoppy so beer, this bad Shred. boy is a 4.06 on Untapped, 7% ABV. It's an IPA sour. It's in their description is blue sour IPA, 7%. Birthday flavors of melted cotton candy, birthday cake sugar floss. Mm. Candied raspberries and ice cream soaked waffle cones. Oh my. Right? I'm like, oh boy, I kind of want to put this, like, put a scoop of ice cream in it or something. So um, it's this, like, you know, that rad kind of uh, blue raspberry color. You know, it's kind of bluish greenish. Uh, the head disappeared, like, before I could even take a picture of it. <laughs> it's got a shy head. <laughs> oh, I hate when that happens. You know, I, I looked it up. It looks kind of like mouthwash. <laughs> it sure does. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully it tastes better than mouthwash. Oh, good grief! Yeah, it's really good. Um, I was really intrigued by this one, especially because um, it came to me by way of Tavor. So mad love to Tavor without going down that rabbit hole again. Yeah, I really was intrigued by it because you know I love Spanish Marie and they have a whole cotton candy series, and so I just kind of wanted to compare the two and. Definitely, um, I mean, definitely different. I don't pick up like any of like the the hoppiness of it being an IPA. I mean, it's a sour IPA, but usually I feel like I, on the back end of a sour IPA, I can pick up like the the hoppiness. There's honestly, this one is like one of those blow pops, like those blue raspberry blow oh, pops, yeah. because I it even has like a little bit of bubble gum to it. Like it finishes kind of like bubble gum. Like it's. I feel like that should have been a little bit more of like the direction of the name or whatever because it tastes just like that that flow pop. Nice. I remember those back in the day. Yeah. So it's got the blue raspberry. It's great. But like I said, definitely a little bubble gum in there. And um, yeah, but otherwise it has a lot of the same stuff as the Spanish Marie. So it's 
Very nice. Great one. Shout out to uh, Spanish Marie. I, it's been a hot minute since I've had some Spanish Marie. Just saying, mm-hmm. anybody out there on the gram mm-hmm. wants to send some over. I know that they are, well, they recently bought some new tanks and stuff. And so they're, it's like a transition period right now. So at the brewery itself, they actually have quite a bit of um, guest handles. Oh. They're, yeah, they st- I just saw like about a week ago they were brewing their own hazy, but prior to that, I mean, it's been it's been a minute. They they haven't really been brewing their own beers for the time being. I did not know that. That's too bad. Yeah, like I think even on brewers. draft, or I think even if you go to the brewery, I think there's only like one or two of their beers right now. No shit. All right. Well, so they're yeah. gonna have like bigger system after this is all said and done. Well, I know. I mean, I know it was a bigger system that they purchased. So yeah, God willing, right? Yeah, because uh, I need them to push them a little further west. Right? Poor from Yeah, I, I know. Well, and I'm so sad because, you know, I was like thriving on my Spanish Marie Monday posts on the gram and I'm a lot of Spanish Marie. Like I've posted them all. They're all... What are you supposed to do on Mondays? I don't know. Hang out with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm anxiously waiting too and I'm optimistic that they're, you know, working on it, but... yeah. Just a little in-between system going on right now. A little inside news. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, we're going to mix things around a little bit, so let's uh, get right into a little bit of booze news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. I know often we, uh, well, we shit on Florida because, quite frankly, they're Florida. But this time, Florida coming through strong. A Florida couple offers free beer as a way to meet the neighbors. Nice. Florida couple came up with a great way to meet their new neighbors after moving into their home during the coronavirus pandemic. They offered free beer. Amanda and Thomas Evans decided to move from Fort Myers to nearby Cape Coral just before the pandemic started last year. It was a different experience, I think, than most first-time homebuyers. They were not sure that when they would even get to meet their new neighbors. Luckily, we have a rescue dog that we walk around the block every day, so we met some people in passing. Typically, you would bring people cookies or pie or invite them over for dinner, but we weren't sure about how people were feeling, Amanda said. Instead, they created a flyer, and that said, Hi, we're new to the neighborhood and would like to meet our lovely neighbors. We will be in our driveway with drinks, ready to meet any neighbors who would like to stop by. We can't wait to meet you. And then her husband wasn't sure anybody would show up, but he said once the free beer sign was placed outside, the neighbors started venturing over. It's always funny to see a sign on the table that says free beer, just to get people to stop and turn their head and drive by and say, what did that sign just say? (laughs) (laughs) We we had a few people do a double take. Free beer is a pretty easy way to get people to show up, said Thomas Evans. They say it's a great icebreaker for anyone who is new to a neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. I'm all in. That's rad. I like that. I have a couple that comes into the brewery and they were in, I don't know, about two weeks ago. And Mm -hmm. they said that their son had just moved into a new neighborhood because I was like, I always ask, I'm like, oh, what are you up to this weekend? And they said they were like, I don't know. We got this cryptic invite to this (laughs) block party. Like, you know, people are new to the neighborhood and we don't know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I, like I made the joke. I'm like, yeah, this message will now self-destruct. And <laughs> so since then, they've come back because they're regulars. They're there every time I'm there. And I was like, so how was the party? And they're like, it was a fucking bust. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, but I don't think anybody had a free beer sign. I mean, I think like oh, one guy go. was like, can't, like picked fruit from his tree that was in the front yard, which let's be honest, his neighbors are probably already stealing. Oh, yeah. And like he was offering fruit and, you know, everybody, they had like <laughs> chips and salsa, party. but it's like, you know, I I will tell you the free beer would stop me in my tracks and I'd at least like rubberneck, you know, like, hey, what would that say? Right. You know. Somebody's got to walk into that party. You all had a beer. um how shitty though block party no booze and just some dude handing out fruit oh yeah right yeah well it was everybody i mean it the way they described it it kind of a little bit sounded almost like like trick-or-treating you know what i mean like each person kind (laughs) of has their own offering and they're you know one house has the cool snicker bars and the other one like you know gives a handful of fucking Bubble candy gum corn or something. Yeah. Worst no, I like ever. candy corn. I'm oh. not, no, I'm not hating on that at all. <laughs> oh, I will hate till the cows come home. <laughs> I mean, I don't hand it out for, well, not that we have any trick-or-treaters in our neighborhood, but <laughs> um, yeah, it kind of sounded like that. Like everyone just kind of had their own little offering and it was just funny to follow up because, and how funny that it ties into this story because, um, I don't know, it was a bust for them. 
I've never had any like, you know, block party, free beer, whatever situations. Uh, I did have somebody try to crash my wedding though. Oh, we had those too. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is super hilarious because again, we're out in the middle of nowhere and we had a reception at my in-laws house, which is, you know, close by. And again, we're out in the middle of nowhere right. and we had like 500 people at our wedding. Holy so there shit. was like a shit ton of people. And literally like we see this, these people like stump, they're shittered. They're laughing. They're at the bar. They're dancing. One tr- like went to try to lean on a palm tree and totally missed and fell. And we were all like, <laughs> "Who are these fools? Like, what? Who?" And you know, we started. Do you know who that is? Because I will admit, there were a lot of people at my wedding that I didn't know. Like, yeah, five hundred people. Jesus. Yeah, I have like five friends. So you know, <laughs> yeah, he totally crashed our party. And we were like, "Where the fuck did he come from?" Yeah. Like, we because we had to have like a shuttle service. Like, we had to have people park somewhere and shuttle people in, and it was. I don't know how the fuck these people found us, but they, they must have just been listening for the Mexican music or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we had this issue. So, I mean, Scott was there. Our wedding was, for being, you know, not out in the middle of nowhere, it was pretty out in the middle of nowhere. Like, you wouldn't walk to it, right? No, right, yeah. Yeah, we had this guy walk up, walk through the parking lot, walk into the venue, wearing shorts and a backpack. <laughs> it's like, dude, you don't want to stick out, then put on some fucking pants. But- sure. So he comes walking up out of nowhere and he walks up and the wedding coordinator saw him and was like, who the, f-? well, first one of the security guards saw him and said, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm here to pick up that lady with the blonde kid. <laughs> it's like, and he's like, oh, okay. Let him go past. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, that was so generic. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, that was kind of a little ballsy too, though, because what if it was a kidless wedding? Well, and it was a kidless wedding, except for the kids that were in the wedding. Oh. So it, it was a, it was a choice. Um, yeah, yeah. So then he gets past that. Then the wedding coordinator sees him and is like, "Who the fuck is the guy in shorts?" Yeah. And gets her son, who is a friend of mine, also was at the wedding, was like, "Hey, uh, you need to go cut this guy off at the pass." So my friend, her son, goes over and is like, "Hey, buddy, what the fuck are you doing?" He's like, <laughs> "Oh, uh, well, I'm just here to, to get the girl and the blind." He said the same thing. He's like, "I don't yes. fucking think so. Get the hell out of here." And I guess he was making his way for where we had gotten dressed, which is also where all our shit was, sit- uh, was oh, sitting. Oh, yeah, and all like the sketchy. tips for the various vendors and stuff was was sitting in there. Ooh. And so the good news is, I think it was locked, so he would have had a hard time getting in. But theoretically, mm-hmm. he could have gotten in. But um, yeah, so my buddy cut him off and then went and found a security guard. And was like, "Hey, get this guy out of here." And like yeah. kicked him out. Luckily, he didn't get wow. to, to any of our shit. So that's like next level wedding crashers. Like he wasn't going there for the chicks. He was going there for the coin. Yeah. And uh, ask Dan. There were no chicks to be had there. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dan. I wish he was here for this one. I sat Dan strategically. I don't We don't have a lot of single friends, first of all. Uh-huh. And uh, I don't know Dan's current status. I don't ask him on the weekly. But at the time, he was single. And... Uh, one of my friends, her husband couldn't make it, so she was going to bring her sister, who is totally hot and who I thought was totally single. And I thought, this would be great. I'm going to sit Dan at the table with, what's her name? She's single. They can talk. And like the week before the wedding, if not sooner, I was talking to the friend and was like, yeah, so I've sat you and so-and-so next to Dan. And you know, Dan's a single guy too. And she's like, oh, my sister's not single. I was like, wait, since when? <laughs> Yeah. And I had told yeah. Dan all about it. I'd gotten him stoked Dang. on sitting next to the single girl, like the one single girl at the wedding. Right, right, right. And, yeah. Oh, I had to uh, text him like, man, I'm I'm sorry. I guess some bad news. Ooh, Cupid <laughs> failed. Yeah. I mean, he still showed up. Yeah. So kudos so to then, Dan. So then was he just like, so you're the hot one I was supposed to meet. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell the hot one until like afterwards. I was like, so I tried to set you up. She's like, oh, yeah, I sort of heard about that. Oh, yeah. I guess her sister funny. told her. So, I think the free beer helped. Yeah, the free. We had good beer at the wedding. That is definitely. We had good uh, beer. two integrins, a fourteen cannons, and a modern times. At this point, it's you know where you are in your I don't know industry or whatever you want to call it. You you can't have anything less but the best, right? People were expecting it. Like, exactly. Like they That's know what us. Insane. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's where it's gotten for me, too, is like, you know, hey, Allie, bring the beer to the party. I'm like, all right, cool, will do, which I did over the weekend. I picked up two cases of um, West Brew, mm. 
And my husband came in carrying that like a, he was a hero. I was so excited. <laughs> Shout out to West Brew. Yeah. My favorite is when I'm going somewhere that I know doesn't appreciate beer. I'm like, bring the beer like we will do. And like yeah. go to Costco and just get a couple of cases of 805. <laughs> Easy. Pe- I mean, first of all, 805, fucking solid. I'll drink it any yeah, day. You, of sure. Year. You can't go wrong there. Yeah. No. It, yeah. My buddy likes to say, and I know it's a little offensive, but my buddy likes to say it, it's the Budweiser of the craft world because anybody will drink it or the Bud Light of the craft world. And right. it's, it's just a great solid beer and it's still craft. So. You can get them for basically a dollar a beer at Costco. I'll just go to Costco, get a couple cases, camping beer, party beer, whatever. It's like, we're all drinking yeah. 805s tonight, people. It's a definitely good, like, especially after you have a couple of like solid beers, you know, and you're just, you're not ready to stop drinking, you know? Oh, yeah. It's a good, Start like, mixing a, that one in. Yeah. You're trying to wean yourself off the, the big boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because you're at the point now where you know, like, you know, you're breathing that you're not going to actually appreciate the beer anymore at this point. It's just because the demons and the alcohol are telling you you have to have more to drink you right you got to drink more you always have to have one more beer always i will one more everybody to death yeah (laughs) nothing fucks up my sundays like my saturday one more beers yep (laughs) yep so many same my friend he owns a a boat company and he said that when i you know grow up and buy a boat i have to name it just one more (laughs) that's a good name (laughs) i'm like it's perfect because i one more him to death too i'm like everybody (laughs) one more oh god (laughs) we we can never go drinking together oh (laughs) it's so dangerous it's it's never gonna stop it's gonna be like a bernie man (laughs) (laughs) just a week-long party oh yeah for sure wake up the next sunday what the fuck happened It's dark in there. Sure is, you old. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, that'll be funny. We'll definitely have to strap on some GoPros, you know, just to see where the night takes us. <laughs> yeah, and some barf bags. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll have to wear shirts that say, like, don't give us seltzers. <laughs> then I'm going to say in little, like, on fine printing, no, really, you can give me a seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> but not this guy. Yeah, 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 oh, totally. Fuck. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, if you want to win a free wedding, Bush Beer Bush is giving out free weddings. <laughs> uh, hopefully they trim it first. The beer brewer is offering three lucky couples the wedding of a lifetime by opening the doors at its farmland venues to hold their event. The free outdoor farm weddings will allow for up to 100 guests to be invited to the wedding and reception, which will be held at Anheuser-Busch Farms in either Idaho or North Dakota in July. As an added bonus, Bush Beer will provide a wedding planner, photographer for the ceremony, flowers, food for the reception, non-alcoholic beverages, wedding cake, DJ, or band, and a makeup artist. You'll also be compensated $1,500, which you can use for either wedding expenses or your honeymoon. Uh, to enter, you need to use the hashtags Bush Farm Wedding and hashtag contest on any of the socials and tell the company how Bush Beer brings them together. <laughs> they also need to follow the beer brand, blah, blah, blah. I love that Bush knows how shitty they are. They are not including free Bush Beer in the package. That's not in the package? No. You get <laughs> wedding planner, photographer, flowers, food, non alcoholic beverages, wedding oh, cake, DJ, makeup artist. BYOB ah. or what? BYOB. Now that well, fuck yeah, then that's rad. Yeah, so, I'm gonna enter. I mean, so oh, actually, get, I don't need to get married, but I mean, now <laughs> I want to, you know, win it. Maybe you and Flex could meet up for a little uh, <laughs> wedding there. <laughs> Just saying, he's gonna stand me up like he did tonight. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> tonight was my fault. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, I, it's like wow, they know their beers so bad they won't even give it to you for free. Man. That's actually pretty gnarly. That's yeah. like pretty intense. It looks like a cool looking spot. So take that fifteen hundo, go spend it on some good beer, and have yeah. yourself a fucking right. wedding. Wait, so and it comes with fifteen hundred dollars spending. Yeah, just as so cash. Why are you, they doing this? Um, I, I, you know, publicity, of course. But their sure. excuse was that wedding venues are filling up like crazy as things are starting to open up. Like no one can get a wedding venue. For all the people okay. that had to cancel their weddings for the Rona. And this is like a no purchase necessary? Or how do you enter the contest? No purchase necessary, I would imagine. Because I'm sure not oh. purchasing anything. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Free party. Yeah, that's kind of rad. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. Maybe my husband and I can renew our vows. There you go. He yeah. might stand you up, though. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> you just have flex on standby. <laughs> 
<laughs> Too far? Okay. Oh, I'm just thinking how sad that is that I'd have to get a backup because my husband wouldn't show up at her own wedding. <laughs> Gotta back up the backup. <laughs> now that he knows what he knows now, he's yeah. like, nah. <laughs> no. Nope. time machine. Not falling for that again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe he thinks it's like a uh, when you refinance your home and so you like renew your your lease or not your lease but your mortgage for thirty more years. It's like yeah, oh god, yeah. Does time start over again if we renew our vows? <laughs> My son's kindergartner teacher, uh, or actually son and daughter, they both had her. She she swears she's like I think that marriages should come with as a lease. So you're married sure. for seven years because it's like is it the seven year itch? Mm-hmm, the seven? Mm-hmm. So you're married for, for six years, and then on the seventh year, you have the option to, you know, just divide and conquer and go their own ways. Or yeah, like, like I'll do, I'll add on a couple more years and give it another try and see. That's you like know, a sports where it contract. Goes. Yeah, there she you go. literally, she's like, I don't see why marriages can't be like that. It's just, it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it comes with a, it's a seven year deal with a player option at the end to extend. Yep. Right. I mean, it's, it's like leasing a car. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Not the word. <laughs> I mean, we, my wife and I bought our house before we were married and people are like, wow, you're buying your house before you're married. I'm like, I feel like that's a lot more permanent than most marriages I've been around. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, the house is 30 years at least. Right. Marriage, totally. marriage, you know, who knows? So yeah, six, you know, six, six months to, I don't know, forever. I had a friend who was, was divorced within, I think it was seven months. Yeah. Married in July, divorced by February. Yeah, broken up by paper. yeah, that happens. Yeah, not good times. Yeah, what's that? The beginning of the what is it? It's old school. Yeah, and then you you make a surprise trip coming home from San Diego, and you find a guy uh, handcuffed and blindfolded coming out of your closet or something like that. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing really bad at quoting it, but it's something like that. Like he, I guess he comes home from early from a work meeting, and they were married for like a month or a week or something, and <laughs> you know. A, a guy come popped out of the closet. They were doing like a hide and seek thing or something. <laughs> you know, I, I've seen that movie so many times. I remember so little of it. <laughs> it's weird. That's funny. I, yeah. and, it, and it's not like I dislike it. I enjoy it every time I see mm-hmm. it. I just, I don't remember most of that movie. Anyways. Yeah. You probably fixated on the KY jelly wrestling match. That part I do remember. <laughs> mm-hmm. I had a, I had a feeling. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I bet uh, you know what color shirts the girls were wearing. Uh, black and white. <laughs> One of them was striped. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. I'm right. totally making that up. I have no oh. idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, was there a ref? There was a ref, actually. <laughs> there was, was a ref, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Oh, before I get on to some beer science, let's do one more story. The US DOJ, we talked about this a while ago, dismisses concerns over CBA Craft Beer Alliance's sale of Kona, Hawaii to PV Brewing. All right. So quick recap. Uh, Budweiser, well, CBA, Craft Beer Alliance, now owned by Budweiser, bought Kona, but they did not, they were not able to buy the Hawaii rights to Kona because of weird rules where we, Budweiser couldn't be like the, you know, it was a monopoly situation. So they sold the rights to sell Kona and distribute Kona in Hawaii to PV Brewing. Well, then the DOJ was like, mm, I don't know about that. Well, as of this week, it's no longer an issue. The sale can go through. Uh, CBA slash Budweiser can fully own Kona, except for in the state of Hawaii. So it's the same then, right? They've they've now uh, dismissed any concerns or holdups or anything. So okay. moving moving on through the courts, and now it can be official. So it was just they just made it permanent. They just well, it, they official. were holding it up. Oh, okay, they weren't allowing it to take place. And oh, now, now okay. it may officially take place. Oh, so they can sell it now. Yes, so they can sell or they can purchase Kona. Budweiser okay. can now purchase Kona one uh, 100% purchased except for the state of Hawaii. Okay, gotcha. So any anything being distributed in Hawaii, they have no say over. Gotcha. Wasn't that their big thing was, hey, this is brewed in Hawaii and blah, blah, blah. And that's kind of was a, a problem with that? Yeah, so a little bit of it was being brewed also because less craft beer and non Budweiser products get to the islands of Hawaii. They were afraid it'd be a monopoly because it's just one more Budweiser oh, product okay. filling the shelf. Yeah. So, you know, if there was more craft from California on the Hawaiian shelves, then it would probably have never been an issue. But because of monopoly situations, they wanted to make sure Budweiser did not own 
the Hawaii rice. It's so fucked up. If you're so worried about it, just don't let him buy the fucking brewery. Yeah, yeah. just yeah, a bunch of legal crap that yeah. Mm-hmm. So we talked about that. I mean, last year when they when they were in the process of purchasing. So, and I say last year that could have been 2019. It, last year was you know three days and also ten years at the same time. <laughs> uh, and Ballast Point is officially and permanently closing their Chicago location. And our apologies to San Francisco. They will be opening up up there. <laughs> oh. Yeah. See, I thought they were on their way out. It seemed that way. I mean, with the, especially with the closing of Chicago. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised. I thought we were, you know, we could just chalk that one up as a loss and move on with our <laughs> lives so I don't have to hear people talk about how much they fucking love Sculpin. Oh, just my like God. Hearing people say that shit at the brewery. They're like, what do you have that's like Sculpin? I'm like, fucking nothing. Urinal. <laughs> None of it. None of it's like Sculpin. The urinal tastes like Sculpin. Ugh. What? They haven't been in Chicago that long, though, have they? No, they weren't there that Just long. Just a few years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Wasn't the Chicago location the one that they were at the ballpark? Uh, No, I don't believe it was at the ballpark. Oh, okay. But the investor who bought Ballast Point is from Chicago, so it was even weirder that they did not stay in Chicago. Oh. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's true. true. Because they're originally like from San Diego, aren't they? Yeah, they're like the OGs from San Diego yeah, back yeah, in the right. day. They were like the only homebrew shop in San Diego, and uh, you know they were they were with Stone in the early days of of IPAs and kicking you in the teeth with hops and that kind of stuff. And then they sold for a billion dollars, and the idiots that bought them didn't even want the spirits line. Right. Yeah, so the so weird. wait, who did they sell to again? Constellation Brands. Constellation, that's what it is. But Constellation doesn't own them anymore, right? No, then they sold to that investor who's in Chicago. And when they bought, when Constellation bought Ballast Point for a billion dollars, they also let them keep their spirits, their distillery, which a couple years ago they sold to Budweiser. So now, who was it? Because I remember you guys talking about this. I think this was before I was um, hanging out with you guys IRL-ish on the (laughs) podcast. And... Wasn't it something like, wait, who was, who were the people that were college together? Was it the owners of Constellation and the owner of Ballast Point? Or is it the owner of hmm. whoever it is that owns? Do you I, remember the story? I don't remember the college thing. I, I know that the... Because the transaction like took place on a golf course, that, right? I remember it did take place on a golf course. I think the guy who ultimately bought them was friends with one of like the higher ups at Constellation. I don't know if it was a college friendship or what, but, but they were out golfing and... And honestly, it just sounded like a bet. Like, if, if I beat you, you got to sell it to me for way less yeah. than you fuckers bought it. Right. I thought the whole um, intention was to try to get them to get their independent label back. I think so, too. Like, at the time, I really thought that this was a plan to get them to be craft again and hopefully kind of, like, revitalize the brand because, hey, we're craft. But right. one, one thing they haven't done is a whole campaign that says, hey, we're craft again. Right. You think they would? You think they'd want Maybe people to know that? Maybe they're still licking their wounds a little bit. I don't know. I mean, it's been a while now. You'd think that would you would just bombard social that media. Would be, yeah, like with, that would be a part of their like comeback. Yeah, like look at us. We're local. We're craft. We're all this. Yeah. And they haven't done that at all. Yeah. It's weird. I don't get it, but I also don't drink it, so it's fine. Sure. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's uh, let's turn our attention to a little beer science. From a bottle, from a can, why don't people understand my inebriation? Beer! Beer science! Glass bottles, aluminum cans, hops and malts, and magic in my hand, we're drinking beer science! Years we've never had before. I just want an excuse to play that song. <laughs> it's love, very catchy. It is. I love me some beer science. Uh, <laughs> so I'm very excited to be doing some beer science with one of my new favorite breweries, Humble Sea. In our most recent hot box, we got two single hot beers. And I thought, well, I should have these two single hot beers and talk about their profiles and about the hops and get a little nerdy and maybe put some people to sleep who are having trouble sleeping. Um, so with me, I have boatloads of Nelson. <laughs> it's working already. Boatloads of Nelson, double dry hopped West Coast IPA, single hop with just Nelson, of course, and boatloads of Rewonk, Rewaka, Rewaka. It's a new one for me. Bless you. <laughs> Thanks. Double dry hopped, hop fuse, foggy double. 
So let's start off with Nelson because it's the single. Uh, double dry hop West Coast IPA, double dry hopped with single hop hand selected Nelson. Uh, aroma and flavor, you should be getting some peach, white grape, gooseberry, and blood orange. Light and crispy mouthfeel with subtle bitterness. And they say rad details, simple crispy malt bill designed to showcase our hand selected Nelson from Hop Revolution. This is 6.8% and has a 406 on untapped. I'm going to take a sip. All right, that is clean and crispy and as westy as it gets. I know 6.8 might not be the highest percentage in the world, but boy, is it non-existent. Like, this could get dangerous just pounding these like water. Um, I definitely get the a little bit of peach. But I really get the white grape. It almost has like a white wine ness to it uh, mm-hmm. in a very refreshing kind of way. With that, I'll switch over to boatloads of Rewaka. 8.8%, 419 on Untapped, both nicely rated beers. Uh, it's double dry hopped with single hop Rewaka. Nice and simple. Uh, Roman flavor, they say classic New Zealand aroma with creamy melon and fruit loops on the tongue with a medium to light and juicy mouthfeel. And it's a single hop Rewaka to show off one of the more unique and rare hops on the planet with tons of flaked and malted oats and row wheat for deep, deep fog. I love the foggies. All right, I'm going in for a, a sniff and a taste on this one. Ooh, this one is a lot more fruity and tropical. Ooh, that is delicious. That that's like drinking fruit dru- fruit fruit juice. Cool. Eight point eight percent, everybody. Get that fruit juice. Um, so, also, what I did is, if it wasn't nerdy enough, is I pulled up the hop profiles of these two hops. Oh, cool. Yeah, hoplist.com. If you guys ever want to know about a hop, or if you're designing like a, a homebrew recipe or something, check out hoplist.com. You can find out all all kinds of hops. So the Nelson hop. Uh, its main purpose is both bittering and aromas, so early edition, late edition. Uh, characteristics are smooth bittering, rich, fruity gooseberry, and white wine flavors. In this Nelson, I definitely got the white wine flavors. I think it'd be a good beer to try and switch somebody over from white wine. Uh, with a mild, um, well, I lost where I was reading, but mild uh, where bitterness, wherever I was reading there. This is a great podcast. And then on the... <laughs> On the on the Rewaka side, I know. Kidding, I'm sorry, kidding, everybody. On the Rewaka <laughs> side, uh, they say there's notes of grapefruit and kumquat, and I've never had a kumquat before, but I can definitely attest to that grapefruit. Uh, and the main purpose for these hops is aroma. So normally a later hop addition into your boil and dry hop situation, and these come from New Zealand. So there you have it. There's a little beer science for you. I hope I didn't put anybody to sleep too hard. I just like to get nerdy with my hops and. I really enjoy the single hop beers because you get to learn about different hops. Easy peasy. Oh, wait, you've never had a kumquat? I don't think so. What? For reals. That is bananas. Well, you live on a farm that makes fruit. <laughs> yeah, well, it also grows fruit too. But well, yeah, you know what I mean, kumquats are like gnarly season right now. Really? We got kumquats everywhere. Oh yeah. You said kumquats kumquat. are kumquats are coming in <laughs> hot right now. Are they? Yeah. yeah, I don't think I've ever had one before. That, it, that I, that's crazy to me. Can you can you describe their flavor? Um, well, so a kumquat is about the size of your thumb, okay, or a little it's bit like bigger. Chicken. <laughs> yeah, and you eat the skin. You eat the skin with it, oh. and the skin is like you know, like mild, like an orange zest or whatever. It's it's in the orange family. Okay, it's orange or Citrusy. citrus, but yeah, but orange, and then um. But they're very like tart. Like it's a good thing that they're not super large because you you just pop the whole thing in your mouth. That's a drop, I'm sure. Yes, it and, is. <laughs> <laughs> but it it's like sour, like like mm. yeah, kind of sweet, kind of sour. Interesting. Depends on which ones you get. You know, like the different colors and stuff. You, you gotta just come out to the ranch and try them all and figure out which ones you like the best because they're definitely they vary on like you know like the the smaller and the brighter orange are a lot more sour okay. and then like the larger ones with like the lighter shade of orange are on the sweeter side well i'm coming down there we'll have uh some kumquats and just one more beer yeah i we did a um kumquat collab once at the brewery too oh really we sure did you guys yeah. are so fucking fancy it turned out really good too yeah. nice i'm i'm jealous 
I'm getting that hustle on with the fruit. Yeah, you is. <laughs> Jesus. Speaking of the the one at Stone, the Stone Buddha Hand collab is ready now. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. If I message them about it, they can leave me on red again. Mm, probably. <laughs> yeah, most no likely. promises. Yeah. I don't run the gram for Stone, so I'm not. I'm not certain. I, I don't have would. any control on that. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, let's uh, wrap things up with a couple more news stories. Uh, oh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask Scott what he was drinking. What am I drinking? What are you drinking? I'm drinking uh, Enjoy by 42021. Yeah, hey, bro. Man. Yeah, man. That's cool, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah, man. I already got ahead of the game, man. <laughs> how's uh, how's 420 this year? Uh, 420 is uh, excellent. I love me some 420. Oh yeah, it's it's a good <laughs> it's a man it's a good hazy IPA. Oh the be- oh it's hazy. Yes it is. Oh I didn't see that yes, coming. It stone. is. In, in fact, it says right here on the bottle a, a blazy hazy IPA. <laughs> mm. I mean it makes sense because it's 420, but boy do they not do a lot of hazies. Now I got to seek this one out. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, this is good stuff. All right. Is good. it dank? Dank man. Um. Uh, yeah, it is actually. Yeah. Is it like yeah. ooey? Is it sticky, icky, icky? Put it in the air. Yeah. <laughs> and I just wave it like I don't Smoke care. Smoke weed exactly. every day. Yeah. This is where we need Dan for the rest of the 90s please, weed yeah, hip hop yeah. references. Dan, yeah, please come back to us. Hey, I threw in my little smoke weed every day. No, that was, that was great. Yeah. That was perfect. It was the chronic 2001. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. You got that hazy, bitter, dank, juicy. Man, it's just, yeah. I You got to get one. No, I gotta go find one. I didn't. You gotta. Haven't even seen them out yet. Jesus, come on, Stone. Nice. I know uh, where you can find the the Stone Four Twenty, and I know where you can find the Stone Buddha Hand Hazy Pale. I'm just saying. In your fridge? <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> where? No, not in my fridge. No, but you. I mean, you gotta go to Stone Liberty mm. Station. Yeah, trying to get you to come that? down to yeah. San Diego. Oh, mm. I'll meet you there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Beep beep beep. <laughs> Um, all right, let's let's wrap things up with a couple more booze news stories. Uh, according to Beerboard, St. Patrick's Day draft sales this year declined almost 21% compared to 2019, two years ago. Oh. And I know that sounds negative because declinings are negative. It's 20, almost 21%. Uh, it's actually a good thing. They're saying that with the way that the beer industry has declined upwards of 50% over the last year, to see only a 21% decline over 2019 numbers for St. Patrick's Day is actually a sign of things improving. Oh. If that all makes sense. Yeah, and maybe because of what we've gone through, but uh, it's also because um, the hard alcohol and the wine, they they increased while the beer decreased. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't know that uh, spirits increased. Spirits Most increased. They're, they're going, they're just I mean, like, the bottom line dude. was, I think, alcohol and all, they uh, had a slight... Uh, Increase this year, mm-hmm. beer beer fell, but yeah, like I said, hard alcohol and wine made up for the for the failing beer. Interesting, and, and I know that weird. I know that hard seltzers were a big part of beer not falling oh. as hard as they could have. I mean, especially for me. I was gonna say, especially I think Ali had a lot was, to do with it. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome, y'all. Yeah, I definitely had something to do with that curb. <laughs> yeah. Or curve, sorry. Is it a curve or a curb? Well, it's well, a curb yeah. after you had too many. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hit them both. <laughs> yeah, hit them hard. Uh, we talked about this, man, probably about a year ago. Anheuser Busch and Patagonia have settled their beer trademark case. Uh, if you remember, Patagonia Brewing, which is a brewery by Budweiser, basically copied Patagonia, the clothing company's logo and, and profile, and was really done, doing a really good job of making it look like they were related to each other. Uh, well, both parties filed a joint stipulation seeking to dismiss the lawsuit, which basically means they came to some sort of settlement, which was not disclosed. But I'm guessing Anheuser Busch had to pay a lot of money. Ooh, wow! Yeah, at least that's the hope. Dang. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then finally, I pulled this one just for Allie. Speaking of <laughs> curbs, Carl Strauss <laughs> Brewing Company and their Endless Summer Hard Seltzer to launch in Arizona. Ooh, oh, yeah. mainly Yuma. Yeah, good news <laughs> for your trips to Arizona, Allie. I haven't had that one. Oh, well, get yourself to Yuma. You can Next have trip. Some. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be blacking out on the baseball field <laughs> in no time. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Tits up. <laughs> right on. Yes. There's the mother of the it. year strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, I think that that would not be my first nor second time that that has happened. Not your first or second rodeo. Yep. Or third. 
Yeah. Before, my before. poor kids. Oh. Yeah. Just kidding. Just setting an example. <laughs> of who not to be when you grow up. Of who to be when you grow up. Very well. Well, I think that's everything. Uh, this was a very different show, and hopefully you guys uh, haven't turned it off by now. Let us know what you thought, and uh, you know how to get a hold of us. The Unfiltered Gentleman at gmail.com, all that good stuff. Follow us on the socials. The Unfiltered Gentleman. Follow Allie at Allie and Callie, A-L-L-Y dot I-N dot C-A-L-L-Y. Call us, 805-538-BEER. It's 2337. And let us not forget. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. I was literally just about ready to like skirt, rec- <laughs> drop the record or whatever. Yeah, record scratch. Hi, Vanessa. Happy birthday, Shred. That's right. Happy birthday to Shred. March yes. is full of birthdays. Dude, I was doing the math backwards. I'm like, what the fuck was it? Was it August? What was going on in August? I don't know. Yo, dude. Yeah, so y'all were getting down. Getting getting busy over the summer. For real. Summer loving. Had them a blast. Sure did. And then some. Yeah. <laughs> to all the Grease fans out there. <laughs> um, great. Well, hope everyone's staying well hydrated. I do have a tech support session with Flex, so hopefully he's on the show very soon. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night.